Welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. Last time I left off, my long breaker bar was too long and it would hit here when I rotated it. So luckily, Harbor Freight to the rescue. I have found this for $10 with a half inch drive. If you watch the previous video, you'll realize I needed something besides a ratchet because when you spin this around, it suddenly goes with a ratchet. But this I can really control how far I turn the crank. If you watch the previous video making a 240 degree template, you'll see that I made this template that allows me to gauge 240 degrees. Also, if you watched the previous video, we found uh, top dead center when cylinder one's on the compression stroke by looking in this hole and finding the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this 19 millimeter on there. So this is a trick that somebody taught me in 1985. I'm gonna get some electrical tape here and instead of just pressing it down right on there if you actually fold over a little tab like this that gives you a little handle to hold on to so I'm just going to make two of those So I tried to fit it over like this, but I can't get it on. If I just slide this down like this, then I should be able to get it on right like that there. Slide this back up and then line it up right there. Making sure this is lined up with that. Then I'm just going to tape it on. Hold on a sec. So my tape wouldn't stick, so I just have a little isopropyl alcohol in this bottle. I'm just going to squirt it on a little paper towel. I like to cut up little paper towels. And I can wipe this off. Hopefully that'll make the tape stick now. Let me dry that off. Here's a dry towel. Right. Let me tape it on. There, that's better. So I can do the 180 degrees and then another 60 from here to be here to be the 240. So just for fun, you can see cylinder one's at top dead center and the lobes are pointing away from each other, which we went into great detail on the other video. So let's go see what cylinder two looks like at this point before we turn it to 240. So cylinder two intake looks like the valve is open there. And there, and at the exhaust, it looks like it's closed there and there. So now I'm going to rotate it 240 degrees counterclockwise. So let's put it back. Let's try this. So there is a little slop in the wrench here, so you might be losing 10 degrees here, but if we go to there, it really spun on me there. Okay, there's the 180. You're right there, 180. Now let's see if we can get that last 60. Okay. Let's go see what it looks like now on that cylinder too. So that's good. There's the intake and it's pointing away from us. And then the exhaust is also pointing away. So there's the exhaust and there's the intake. I'm gonna go get my feeler gauges now. So I did a whole video on checking out which feeler gauges you want. And the intake was 0 0.0043 to 0 0.0079. And I determined that I'm going to use filler gauges 5, 6, and 7, and 8 thousandths. I'm just going to start with this 4 and see what happens. So the 4 slides in. Let's try a 5. So here's the 5 thousandths. I 
I can get that to slide in with a little bit of resistance. Okay, let's see if the six slides in. Okay, I can't get the six to go in. So here's the other one, intake number two cylinder. I'm just going to start with a six. And it won't go in, so let's go back to a five. Okay, here's the five. Okay, this five slides in pretty nicely. So let's write down the numbers for cylinder number two intake. This is where I'm going to set the buckets when I take them apart. So we had measured on this one. I'm just going to say 0 0.005 bit and 0 0.006 didn't. That was the same on the other one. So for cylinder number two, and actually all of them, the exhaust valve clearance was, I called it, 10 to 12 thousandths, and I was going to use feeler gauges, the 11 and the 12 thousandths of an inch. Of course, you go on opposite sides of those to figure out what fits where. So let's see what happens on this one. So if you round it off for the exhaust, it's between 10 and 12 thousandths. Cylinder number one was three and six. And on cylinder number two, I already slid in the three, and it went in okay. So cylinder number two exhaust, let's try the four thousandths. Here's the four on this one. Slides in okay. This one, a little, a little more resistance, not much. I have a feeling on this one the five won't fit, and this one maybe a five will fit. Cylinder number two exhaust, let's try five thousandths. Here's the five. Goes in there with a little bit of pressure. It's hard on this one because you're trying to bend it around this corner. Um, let me pause it for a sec. So if you go around to the back side, sometimes, not sometimes, but I'm, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm coming from the back side. I can't get the five into this one. And then the other one. I can. So that means this one's less than five. So since there's two intakes and two exhausts per valve, per valve I'm going to start calling them cylinder two left valve and cylinder two right valve exhaust. So cylinder two left valve exhaust. I can get this six thousandths to go in. So I'll save some time and let's see if the uh, seven, the seven thousandths goes in. So cylinder two left exhaust valve, seven thousandths of an inch. See if the seven thousandths fits. Seven goes in, let's try an eight. Cylinder two exhaust left valve. Let's try an eight thousandths. Here's the eight thousandths. You kind of can bend it up a little like this. Don't forget it started. Okay, I can push the eight in fairly easily. Cylinder two left valve exhaust. Let's try the nine thousandths. All right, here's the nine thousandths. Okay, I can't get the nine thousandths in. So this is looking towards the back of the engine this way. And this is what I was calling cylinder number two. Or, yeah, cylinder number two exhaust. Hard to, hard to write and film at the same time. Let me just kind of write. 
looks like the camera's lined up. There, that's better. So we know the eight thousandths didn't fit. I'm just going to say no. Oh, no, actually, that's wrong. The eight thousandths fit, but the nine thousandths didn't. So, so far on the exhaust, we have three, six, four, and eight. So just for fun, we have cylinder two at top dead center. This is cylinder one. Looks like it's starting to depress the exhaust valve and the intake is up like this. Obviously cylinder two, the lobes are pointing away from each other and you can't see the other two because they're under here. And if we rotate over to cylinder three, those are really hard to see. They're under here, under this cap. Well, we lucked out a little bit, just two are under the cap there and there. And these ones out here, you can actually see. So this intake on number three looks like it's slightly depressing the intake valve and the exhaust, the lobes pointed up like this. Let's see if I can rotate it a little bit. So that's the exhaust on number three with cylinder two at top dead center. And the intake is slightly depressing the intake. Then down in here, there's the other one for intake. And the other one for the exhaust is down in here. So we just did cylinder number two, 240 degrees. So to get to cylinder number three, we need to go another 240 to up to 480. So we need to rotate another 240 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to remove my jig and reorient it. So it's easy to get this off now because I put those little tabs on the tape. So let's just slide the jig back over. Line it up here. Retape it down. So we have 180 from here to here, and then we needed to go another 60 to get another 240. So here we go. So there's the 180. Let's go to the other, the next 60, another 240. Should be close there. So we rotated over. So cylinder three is top dead center. This is cylinder one. Like it's not doing too much. Here's the exhaust. It's up and away. Looks like the intake's just about to start pushing. We go over to cylinder two. Here's the intake, it's pointing like that, and the exhaust. Hard to see, but it looks like it's just starting to push the valve open. And if we go over to cylinder three, which we're trying to measure next, the lobes, there's the exhaust pointing away, and there's the intake. So let's go ahead and measure those. So cylinder number three, intake clearances are the same for every cylinder. That's if you round it off four to eight thousandths. Cylinder number three, left and right intakes. This is a seven thousandths. Right won't fit. Left won't fit. Cylinder number, cylinder number three, left and right intakes. This is six thousandths. Won't fit in that right one. Won't fit in the left. Cylinder number three, left and right intake valves. Let's try five thousandths. There's five thousandths. 
doesn't fit. So it should be between four and eight. Let's try a four. The four slides in nicely on the right and on the left. So I'm double checking my work on cylinder number three intake and before the five wouldn't fit, but now it does. So I'm um, simplifying my system. I said 05, no, it didn't fit and 04, yes, on both of these. But when I went to recheck it, which is always good to do, it gets switched to, instead of 0 .004, 0 0.005 fit, but 0 0.06 didn't. A lot of it depends on how you slide it in and how much pressure. So six was a no and five was a, a yes on this one also. All right, just one more to go here. The exhaust. I'm probably going to recheck all these just off camera. So valve clearance exhaust, they're all the same for every cylinder. And I rounded that off to 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch. On the other two cylinders, I got three, six, four, and eight thousandths. So let's see what we get on this one. Cylinder number three exhaust, right valve. I can't fit the six thousandths in, but on the left valve, the six thousandths fits. Let's try a five thousandths on this right one. Okay, the five goes in. Cylinder number three, left exhaust valve, six wouldn't fit. Let's try a seven. Actually, I meant the six would fit, and now the seven fits also. Let's, also see, let's see if an eight fits. Okay, here's the eight thousandths. I have to press pretty hard to get the eight in. Let me try a nine. Cylinder number three left valve, I'm trying a nine. So this nine fits. Let's see if a 10 fits. That's interesting, the 10 thousandths is a bronze color. Let's try the 10. You can kind of see what you're doing better and get it right there on top of the bucket and then push down with your finger. You know, so you're pushing straight in with these feeler gauges. I can't get the 10 to go in. So you need to be careful of the angle you're pushing the feeler gauge in at. So cylinder number three exhaust left, I got 10 no and nine yes. And on this one, I got six no, five yes. So I'm gonna go through this whole chart here and look at it some more and then come back tomorrow, probably recheck all this stuff. And for now, I'm just gonna go edit this video and see what it looks like.